This it's one dumb. guy commented and 18 people like, yo, you're the worst. You're committing these acts. I'm like, bro, relax. It's so dumb. Yo, what's going on YouTube? Thank you so much for joining us in another episode. In today's episode, we have a very, very special guest, Mr. Hectic Cuts. What's up? Nice to How meet you, you, man. Um, this has been in the works for about a month. So let's run it. So I guess the first thing I really want to know is like, who is Hectic Cuts? Why are you Hectic Cuts? How did that begin your origin story, pretty much? So that name actually came from high school. It was, I was a clown in high school. So that, that's sort of, everyone called me Hectic at that time. Funny guy, yeah. This is some dumb stuff, man, I've done. You know, just like the clown gesture there, I guess. Yeah, I know. The one day I sat down, like, because after I was done my accounting diploma, after mm -hmm. high school, you know, typical brown thing. Yeah. Parents want you to go to accounting doctor or get deported it's one of those three options <laughs> i did choose a business right yeah accounting so after I was, after i've done that i was like i, I can't do this mm -hmm. i have to find something else to do yeah the one day while i was getting my lineup done i talked i was looking at people's reactions when they get turned around after a cut and seeing them smile like, it's kind of like magic you know what i mean it is and i'm like shit, i, I want to do that i want i want to do something like that magical how, how, how did your how did your parents react I was lucky enough because my mom actually likes doing hair. She was very interested oh. in that type of area. Yeah. But my dad was like, he was very skeptical about it. He was like, nah, nah, you know? Yeah. But I started slowly getting into it, you know? They are still like asking me how you're doing and all that, back to back, you know? Finish that grind up, you know? I was working part time, you know? I was trying to make some type of pocket change always. Yeah. Then eventually, you know, it's going to working at barber shops. Parents still didn't think I was doing as well, you know, like typical. They saw it was like just minimum wage and stuff like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. I kept it to myself. I kept quiet until this happened, my yeah. own place. Jeez. And all of a sudden, they're like, what the fuck? Yeah. My dad was got his own place. My dad was like, holy shit. And then he said, that night he started drinking, calling all his uncles and everyone. Every, yeah. all the, all the, ah, my son got shot. Ah, look at your son. Ah. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. a surprise. Yeah, it was a well, pride. It's yeah, just a yeah. surprise. And I was like, yeah, this is that's a good feeling. Yeah. Now, then all of a sudden, everything changed now. How they treat me and everything. It's like, I got this sense of like freedom. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it did take a lot of work for sure. Getting yeah. into that industry. But it is worse, you know, the investment. Hair school is not cheap, bro. No, we bro, all know that. 16K. Yeah, bro. I had to take loans out for that. Like, fuck me, bro. I, saw, I, I still had loans for accounting, man. I was like, this stock's not stock. But I was like, fuck it. I'm a high gambler, bro. I like gambling, like in that way. I respect high it, risks. bro. I, I like respect it. Risks. You, you took, you took a risk, and it's paying oh, off. No, like beautiful that. studio here. Yeah, yeah. so we're gonna, we're gonna insert some um, cool shots. But yeah, beautiful studio, man. So how long have you been in the industry exactly? Like how many years? I'm gonna say we're at over five years now. I'm five gonna years to say over. I'm just looking at my search again too. Yeah, over five years. Yeah. Okay, over five years. When you were first beginning, everyone has like these barbers or someone they look up to. Were there any barbers that specifically that stood out to you at that time at that like? Bro, I didn't know any barbers, bro. I was fucking blank face. You were just was, Rambo, eh? I was just cutting. I was like, holy fuck, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> when I was learning how to cut, I was just cutting with my buddies for free. I go to his house, I cut them for free. Yeah. And I, bro, I saw photos of it, bro. Holy fuck. No, the, the first cut. Uh, yeah. The first ever line. Mm, <laughs> Questionable, it. right? It looks like off ramp on the Hendy, bro. It was not good. Oh. But yeah, yeah. After that, starting five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen dollars. Yeah. Then after I graduate. That during that time I was still at hair school after I graduated yeah I got an offering at Tommy Guns to work there so I, I they reached out to you I uh, know the, um, the coordinator helped me out there hooked me up there okay, okay. College really does help you no, out no, the, very good nice. people over there yeah oh uh, then you know I started working and that's how I started building up Jeez. started getting different jobs opportunities and started taking those taking advantage of it started so, building up slowly so with you like obviously like even me bro I started at like free 10 15 20 25 and you know obviously it'll as as I grow it will grow. grow yeah, yeah. But what are some, what's some advice, bro, like that you want to give someone that's thinking about raising their price for the first time? Because I don't know if you remember, I was scared as hell, bro, my first time raising my prices. Is it like raising prices or clientele first? Well, whatever you think is the best way to do it. Like, when should you raise your prices? I don't know, unless you have like a steady clientele. Steady clientele? Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. That's With the demand, right? Oh yeah, yeah, 100%. That's what I ended. And the reason why I started taking those types of jobs are because of high traffic walk-in areas. I know that's the worst place to go, but. Tommy guns? Not, it's not the worst place. I mean, like, it's that's so like I know it's a hard times, you know, like doing walk-ins, man, because you always get some of those clients you really don't want to cut. Yeah. Still have to. Yeah. That's where you got started. Got Tommy guns, and I went to other walk-in sh um, barber shops and malls, all that crap. Then that's where I started building clientele to start following me. It's a grind, eh? Yeah. Th then you start hitting appointment based only, slowly appointments, and yeah, that's why that's why I started loving. It. I was like, oh, I like this. I yeah. like this. I don't like this walk-in. I like this idea. I'm no, going yeah. There now. 
Um, yeah, no, bro. Walk-ins are cool, but like, uh, like I got like a home studio, so I can't have walk-ins. But the content walk-ins is cool, but it's it's for sure like as you grow as a barber, it's like the more niche, like you know. You, it's you your go, preference, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Yeah, everyone yeah. has their own branches. That's why I like seeing from yeah. barbers. It's pretty and, sick. And like the the tone that you set as a barber is the type of clientele that you'll start attracting. You no, know, like literally, literally like, bro. If you, I don't know if you guys know or not, but Actic's actually like a higher end barber. It's not like. Like which I respect, and you 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 deserve it. You've grinded your way there, and you've oh, you've been through the trenches. You know you've been doing the walk-ins, the free oh, haircuts. No, exactly. No, and that, exactly. that's that's no, something that like, you really I like understand. to treat my guys like almost like almost like celebrities in a way, where it's like, yeah. bro, I just want to be cozy, just relax, enjoy the vibe. Yeah. That's what they love. They just love the sense. They love the smell. He, you know, feel touch everything. You know, feel comfortable coming in. The experience. The experience. Like literally drive, going right into the heated ground parking. Right, even even we were sure coming in. We're like, whoa, this no, is like nice. some VIP nice. stuff. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That's why I like the word VIP. I just love that word. Like luxury. Yeah. I just love luxury, bro. So as a barber, what do you think personally is your biggest strength and your like biggest weakness? My biggest strength is marketing, oh, 100%. I can, I, can, I can fucking lean that out anytime. People know, and I know what's up with that. Yeah. Like, I go to shops and all that shit, private teaching, just for marketing. You have to. Like, and, my, and that accounting diploma helped me out a lot. A marketing. lot? I love it, bro, shit. They taught me well. Yeah. How to social media market. Even the, even the fucking marketing companies, man, that I cut those those guys that I worked there and owned, they're, like, they're very impressed. They're, they think I have a company that works under me that does my marketing. I do everything by myself, right? Well, I'm, I'm, I, I'm my own, like, tactical way with Instagram and everything. Yeah. I know what to do. Okay, exactly. and, your, and your biggest weakness? Fuck, my biggest weakness, man. I see your public speaking, bro. Public speaking? With like like big cl classes, big I'm like, fuck. It's, That's it's why I do one-on-one -on -one for now, but I'm slowly doing that. I got so many offerings right now, but I'm like, ugh. But I'm, I'm stepping out now. I told my sponsorship, the guy who endorsed me for my own beard oil and everything. Yeah. He, uh, he has his own products on IBS as well, like yeah. that company. Yeah. And he's willing to wow. make classes with me for them too, international, big, big classes. Jeez, you're but I'm like, uh, big but I'm like, I, I'm like, yo, bro, just yeah, slowly get slowly, me to. Yeah, don't slap me to like hundred people. I'm like, I'm gonna shit my pants. <laughs> I'm good, bro. But it will, it'll get there. That's okay. my weakness for sure, public speaking. But it'll get there. No, that, that's something you develop over time just by doing it, bro. Yeah. Even me, like, like yeah, we make YouTube videos, but in the beginning, bro, like the first video that we ever like really shot, it took six tries to do. And every time was better than the last, obviously. And even now we look back at it sometimes, like, well, that was a terrible video. But if, if we look at those videos and compare them to like the videos we're shooting now, it's crazy, right? significantly better, bro, you know, the progress. Yeah, it's just trial and error, bro. You just learn as you go. And then your most favorite and your least favorite thing about barbering? My most favorite is getting to know someone, like just getting to know what they do. I mean, man, there's some surprising shit out there's there. There's some bro. cool people in this there's world, shit. bro. And honestly, getting like those uh, guys that will, you know want after hours or like fucking one a.m. calls, bro. I get I get I get those type of house calls, bro. They're fun. I seen your story the other day, bro. It was like I was ready to go. I was ready to go to sleep, and, and this guy's like house call time. I was like, what? Oh uh, yeah, bro. I, I don't even post it most time because most guys don't want to get posted about it. I'm like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I keep it private, bro. And what was the other question? Your and then your least favorite thing. Same type, same thing. That's is 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 hate and love goes relationship ways, with right? those bro. I fucking yeah. hate those house calls sometimes too, bro. My like, fuck's sake. Man. Love hate, man. Love hate. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, stuff like that for sure, man. So with you being, you know, I don't know if you know, you have a huge social media presence on Instagram and your TikTok. You know, you're you're blowing up slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that you're you haven't yet tackled is YouTube, and we talked about it a little bit off camera about you know you're really into your um, your brand right now and your and your beard oil and and that. How did you choose that you that you wanted to prioritize that more than your um, YouTube for now? For right now, I just know that if I'm able to make passive income out of a product where I can just have on the side and yeah. you know, I can be more comfortable with making content on YouTube. Because YouTube, you can't make money right away unless no. you blow up. You it's an investment. To, it's an investment, and I know I, I can use that time to put it into my products. Yeah. With my the the company that I do, that I'm endorsed from. Yeah. And just work from there and just like work work on, you know, making investments and everything, returns and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. Work on the real fundamentals. Yeah. But obviously, man, I, YouTube has been on my eyes right now, my radar, but. I will, I will in the future for sure look into that more once I'm at that point. 100%. No, you have to, bro, because like you, like I would watch you on YouTube. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're an interesting person. And you provide a lot of value too, you know, through like your tips and your knowledge and stuff. Oh, yeah, so for, for sure. sure, for other people to hear it too, I'm sure they'd be interested, you know? Yeah, for sure. I think it's all confidence, honestly. If you don't have confidence in your value, you can't make a decision. Yeah. That, that's very, that's the main thing in my head that always sticks in my head. You know, you have to be confident in what you want to do, your arts and crafts, man, everything. Like, be, I didn't know I was going to be entrepreneur, like working to becoming a pioneer or like stuff like that. Yeah. Like the title just came around, I'm like, okay, whatever, let's, let's, let's do it. It's cool, it's I'll fucking it. sick. 
Yeah. It just comes in naturally. Don't, I don't expect it. I never expected any of this. Yeah, no, no. no I don't sure. expect this shit. Like, I mean, I expect growing up like this, but not like little details like this. Yeah. I like the like, like, end, end game goal. There's no end game goal. I keep on going. You know, that's you shouldn't stop at your goal. But that's where you dip down. No, I'm with you. I think I think it's a lot of stuff, bro. Like, like did you ever picture that you would be here? No, right? No, no, like, no. It's like, not in this specific area. Like, I pictured like not even having my own single room like this, bro. Like, just you know, just working. Like, fuck. It's like I love this quote, bro. I use it all the time. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. You know, even me with this YouTube channel, bro, I was cutting hair. I was like, nah, bro. Like, like, but I slowly built the confidence up. I'm like, you know what? Screw, it, I can do it. And like, I'm ro- I'm running with it. It's just it's crazy, bro. Like, the mind is such a powerful tool. You know, as soon as you start like you start manifestation, as soon as you start like picturing it and you start working towards yeah. it, there's nothing you can't do as a person. No, exactly. That's true. It's a beautiful world. Yeah, the, even coming back to this question, it was about businesses and you know how it's starting everything up, right? Yeah. It's like honestly, man, I didn't like, there's more work after work for yeah. me now. Yeah. Than before when I used to do work at barber shops. I've done go play video games, go home. But now <laughs> after work, I gotta do marketing, I do all this shit now. I gotta do business meetings with fucking companies. Yeah. For my product, and I'm and I'm I'm always out there fucking sending emails to you every day. Any many barbershops in Canada, I can't buy my beard all. Bro, I send so many samples for free and all that. I send I get more samples up free than the profit I make out of the beard oil. But it's an investment, bro. It's gonna, well, so it's gonna work that's out. That's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I do. I mean, it's, that's the way it works for everyone. You know, like a lot of people would be content with like, no, okay, I've done my thing, I'm going home. But especially with you being an entrepreneur now and like Already from man. from transitioning from working in a barbershop to like you're a one man army here, bro. You have to do everything. I do everything, bro. Yeah. You know. know? So yeah. when you made the like when you made the jump from you were working at Alex shop beforehand, yeah, right? compound, yeah, compound cut club in Edmonton, uh, Chinatown. If you're ever here, check it out. But how, like, how long did it take you to like? When did you? When did the picture come into your head? Like, maybe I should like move oh, out. Oh, I want to be a solo. Yeah, that you want to oh, be a solo. Oh, before dude. that, bro. But, so uh, two barber shops down. Technical this move. Is, I want to be solo, but I didn't know I was gonna get a room like this. Damn. Yeah, bro. I, I think methodically, bro. I think like in my head, I know what uh, is gonna happen, but like. Little Diesel, like having a room. Like, oh, I don't know. This is gonna happen. I know I'm gonna be solo. Yeah. Like I got my end game goal, like you know. But like this is not. I'm not even done yet. But for sure, this is one of the areas I'm in. So you, so you're owning a barber suite right now. Do you ever see yourself opening a barber shop? I say no to most of my guys, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't know, man. Never say never. Never say never. I, I don't want drinks, nothing, nothing like that. But you know what? For me, it's more obviously going mobile. Just like just me end game, not end game goal, but my main goal is to fly around cutting hair. Jeez, I like that. I That's like that. Goal. I have the connections for what I can set up right now, but yeah. I just need the clients for it. No. I have the connections. I know what I can do to get out there, but for sure, I just need the right people. Isn't bar being so beautiful? But like, like uh, in the last podcast, we were talking about like, we don't have an office. Our office is like wherever, you have like a briefcase, like a mobile kit or some shit oh, like that? Oh, fuck yeah, man. Or like yeah, a yeah I got my barber backpack. Yeah, bar, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, I have one too. It's like, bro, I can work anywhere in the world. I can be in Calgary today, Atlanta tomorrow, Greece, to, Greece the next day, you know? Yeah. It's, it's all accessible, bro. It's, it's a lifestyle, it's, bro. It's, it's cool. not a job. And you know, I want to get the education too, but that's you know that's more down the road. Yeah, it's fun stuff. All right, guys, that's all that we have for the for the interview podcast section. We're gonna wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it a lot. Like, comment, subscribe. His socials will be on the screen description, and uh, we're gonna get a little studio tour and some extras just for you guys. So peace. So with this beard oil as well, so the one thing is that I we did with the company is that we didn't test it on a single guy. What we did with the scent. We, I got, I went to every girl in the studio here and let them smell it. That's how I made the scent. Cause at the, at the end of the day, it's not guys smelling your beard, it's the girls. And it has five keynote smells, it's very distinct, you know, the very unique smells. It has a very lime orange scent to it, frankincense. It's very, very methodically placed in here. And you know, like I said, it is thicker than most beard oils, so it stays in and has a nice club wear shine to it. It will, it is beautiful shine in clubs. Trust me, I've seen my clients with it, it shit shines in a good way, like it's fucking nice. Yeah, bro, there you that's go. it. All right, check out Hexic Oil. Yes, sir.